how's it going YouTube? As promised, I'm back with the armors now featuring the promos since uh, they do come out this week. Um, yeah, if you've seen the previous video and you don't have access to um, uh, the promos thanks to you know shipping errors and stuff like that, make sure to go check that one out so you can see what I was cooking before then. And this is like uh, halfway between what my original actual list was and the list that I then started working on. Uh, with no promo, so it ended up as a halfway, and I actually like this one much more than my original idea uh, for armors. So, uh, massive shout out to Godfist Jambo for getting me the promos. It's the only reason that I'm actually able to play them right now. And uh, yeah, this is what I'm going to be on for the majority of BT14 alongside the Bagra uh, video. Go check that out when it comes out. And uh, yeah, let's get on with it. As always, Digimon starts with the eggs, so, so shall we, this time, <laughs> improvement, we are on four pre-release Mukamons. Which means the podcast is not getting cancelled, Tom will not quit because I'm not on scuffed uh, mixed rarity. We are going to play some uh, very honest Digimon with Bukamon, give everything jamming. Shoutouts to King Kai for the Kalen and Pota sleeves. Then, in terms of some actual Digimon... One, two, just three of EX1 Vmon. We have cut him down from four. The unsuspend is gorgeous, of course, but now that he's not the de facto best uh, Vmon, he, you know, we have cut him down by one. I still like him the most. We've actually cut down on a lot of the cert power of this deck, just because you're less likely to bottom deck pieces and you do go through enough draws that is worth it. Being able to unsuspend and gain the memory is fantastic. It makes so many of your evolution cheaper and obviously makes armor texture just even more dangerous. So three of EX1 Vmon, still one of my favorite Vmon, but we have access to the promos now, so we're not gonna mess around. We are on four of the new guy. Three drop just like the other one, but your turn when this Digimon would Digivolve into a card with three types and you have a tamer, reduce the Digivolution cost by one. Then it's Inherit is when attacking non once per turn, you have two or more colors, draw one. Inherit is fantastic for just getting extra card cycle. Uh, can evolve over green, which isn't relevant for our deck. But evolving into a free type is a little bit restricting, obviously. Not all of our level fours traditionally have been free type, but most of them. But it does just mean that your gold Vigimon isn't going to be able to get the reduction. And you do have to have a tamer, which means early game EX1 Vmon is still better because. Your tamers are a little bit expensive to drop during turn one. So more often than not, if you're going first, you probably want this and then like a training or something like that. So that way you can get that early, just unsuspend check pressure. Then this is literally from turn two onwards. As soon as you see that tamer, this guy kind of just hard replaces it. They are 1k and 2p, uh, 2k uh, respectively, which means they do both die to some low cost uh, blockers, but it is what it is. Uh, we have cut down the bottom deck four pieces, uh, Vmon down to just two. He does find your Daikens, he does find all of your armors, and as potential he could get bumped up to three or something like that. If I find myself really, really, really needing to be able to, like, be able to find your Magnet X, this is the one that does it, um, because the next Vmon does not. Only search is free type, and right now, Magnet 1X Antibody is not free type, therefore... You can't pick him up, but he does find Davis, which is all of our tamer, so you can double hit off of him. It is kind of a mix and match, but more often than not, you're wanting to find your Davis, because we are actually running more of them now. Being able to find them is quite important, especially when the Davis can then free play any of these. So that is our Vmon lineup. You may have noticed I said Vmon, not rookie lineup. Joining the promo gang, we do have Ukomon, Mean Muggin, the camera. Your turn, once per turn, when one of your Digimon moves from the breeding area to the battle area, you may hatch in the breeding area, then gain one memory. It does see itself moving out of raising, which means your early aggro turns are really, really heavy. You, your turn two is gonna look pretty good. Get to push this out, get your Vmon set up. One of the games I had that um, we both, like I was getting kind of stonewalled by blockers, so I just wasn't able to swing any Vmons, I saw no level fours, which obviously in an armor game, you just lose. But Ukomon triggered six times. It was just catching Vmons, just churning them out. And eventually I just went like seven checks per game because they couldn't block everything. 
Um, so yeah, Ukamon, the GOAT, big fan of him already. Uh, being able to go 2k with jamming is really nice, but obviously he is a white source and he's not like Chimera where he's multicolored, so you do sometimes cut yourself off from being able to do training if you're going first. Uh, so just be in mind, uh, be cautious that you can't do Ukamon training because you've now just lost your blue source. But Ukamon, fantastic. He's just like a must see in the deck. More so than this one, I think that he is more impactful as a new starter. Um, but yeah, the promo card's fantastic. And this is why we have changed up our rookie lineup. 3x1, four of the new promo. Two of BT8, three of BT12, and then two Ukomon for our rookies. As I said before, we are running Gold V. That hasn't changed. You could still run Lydramon, but I still think this card is more useful because you do run into situations where you have 8k level 5s, and you can just shrink them down to 6 and then stun them, which against like Fenrir, if they're like digging for stuff and they get stuck on their 5, uh, you can stun them and just shut that down for a turn, which is nice. You can shrink uh, most of the three drop level three blockers, which can obviously get in the way of your Vmons. And if you are hard playing a Vmon off of like a Davis, for example, or just because you need the search, being able to just go straight over it and shrink and kill a body is sometimes quite useful. Shrink and stun, stuff like that. Remember, you do need the armor and trash to be able to stun. And what better way to get armors and trash than four of the BT13 uh, Magnemon? Um, this one doesn't armor purge, which is annoying versus Fenrir, but it does float into a body, which does allow you to get more search power off if you are digging for pieces. Uh, and you do also get the draw one, which is nice as well. But the fact that he doesn't unsuspend himself is a tad annoying. You do need Daiken in order to get that unsuspend to get your EX1 Vmon to give you the memory back. But he is a free type, which means the promo Vmon now has more use because you're getting that reduction uh, instead of getting the memory back, which can be more helpful. Well, it just guarantees that you're going to get it, but obviously with a Daikan to get the unsuspend, it would be nicer to be able to play that aggressive blocker game. You don't really want to see this one in your opening hand. You want to see it literally any time after that. The one that you want to see in your opening hand, exact same as before, is our good friend BT8 Magnamon, because he's coming down for three, he's unsuspending you, and EX1 Vmon is going to give you back that memory. He is a two-cost unsuspend, which turn one, if you've gone... Vmon training coming down for zero if it's the EX1. And we love getting two checks off with jamming. Absolutely head empty. And sometimes if you've done that, it means you have enough memory to go Vmon plus like another armor or something like that. We are still running the hand traps. Two of the Magnamon Ace. You could run Zudo, but in this particular matchup, especially where Magnamon can get bigger, being able to make things smaller makes it, that you don't need as many armors in trash to be a threatening blocker anymore. You can now just go, oh, here's my 11k, my 9k, my 11k Magnamon, and then Magna Ace does the heavy lifting and shrinks it back down so that the Magnamon is now big enough to take the block on even though you didn't have as many armors. Obviously, it does require you to have a different level 4 so that way you can get the Blast Evo and shrink. But also, sometimes just dropping this before and just popping something is worth it, especially if you've been doing well with your security and keeping it there. Shaco obviously is very, very nice for early aggression. And this did come up in the uh, armor video, the previous one. The reason we're on Magnet Ace instead of Shaco, even though we're on a full set of blue, yellow level fives, is this gives you better defensive utility. Uh, yes, we are a hyper aggro deck, but sometimes you do need to just play a little bit more control and being able to... Uh, Shakomon only lets you play the control during your turn. Yes, the end of turn DNA could let you do it during their turn, but it's still going to be you passing turn and doing the control on your turn. If there's no threats on board, which usually there aren't, which is why you're abusing uh, Bukamon, this lets you play defense once they present the threat to the board, uh, which is incredibly important. Sometimes you recover something that can also be incredibly useful. You can recover a Tamer and then you've just got value. Um, but Magna Angemon Ace is a card that actually lets you play proper defense in a deck that already has defensive utility. And when you're going to be slightly more belligerent with it, having access to the Ace to just shrink things down. Sometimes if you have a feeling that you're going to be loading something big into security or they, you know, maybe they're going two checks, they're committing like a two check thing, being able to shrink them down hard so they might more likely to crash 
is fantastic. So that is why we're running there. Obviously, yes, aggressively, you can't use it as often. But when eight of your level fours are named Magnamon, more often than not, you're just warping into Magnamon anyway. So this gives us a little bit more flexibility on how we can play that mid-range game. Speaking of Magnamon X, we are still on four of them because that's as many as we have. Goes for four over your Magnamons and then obviously can't go over Gold Vigimon without uh, Awakening of the Golden Knight. But this goes for three over your Magnamon Ace, which means if you are doing that Blast Evo, you're popping something and you actually manage to swing Tempo back in your favor. Immediately, you can make it safe by putting this thing back over it uh, during your turn, which is incredibly important sometimes. And sometimes you just go for three, get your Shrink, and then swing with the Magnamon X antibody. So we're on this for four because that's as many level sixes as we need. So... Armor ratio is exactly the same as before. We are on 10, which some people probably call a little bit light. But thanks to the Ukomon, you just... You set up your... Off, you basically don't have an off turn with Ukomon, which means you're always just drawing and cycling. Uh, so I'm not too worried about... I'm not too worried about not finding my armors. Obviously, I have had the games where you don't have them. And you just lose. Like, I mean... Most of the time you just lose. You Sometimes you just summon enough Vmons to show up and bless up the security. But, you know, can't win them all. Blitz Omni helps you win them all. Omni X helps you win them all more frequently. Um, you know, we're a blue deck, so Blitz Omni unsuspend for the final check. Cool, it does what it needs to do. And Omni X lets you just get rid of pesky things in security, especially in a meta like this where trainings and boosts are just everywhere. Sometimes it's nice to just take them out and just just get rid of them. Obviously, if there's pesky security options like Chaos Egg or you know you're playing Seccon, Seccon and uh, Vaccine actually have value. Being able to use this to take the Angemon out of security and put it to trash and stuff like that is actually pretty sick. Um, and it comes down for cheaper if you have X antibody in traits and can bottom deck everything of the same level, which for your, you know, it bottom decks your Quartzes, it bottom decks Hydras if they're on a six board rather than a seven, it bottom decks Brigadramons if you've managed to burn their protection, which if you're doing it during the attack step and they're sideways already, can be enough. Um, solid card, big in security, bad guy of force. We make the joke every time, but, you know, sometimes they do just hit a 16k and die. Especially if Magna Ace shrunk them down to, from irrelevantly big number to something that dies to 16 in security. Now, the last of the promos, Davis Motorhome. Uh, we're running three of this new one because, kind of like I said with the BT-12, you have a free type, Prince of Memory, for free. Also gets to play you a Vmon, which means that you can use this Davis to play a Vmon that costs three anyway. And you've gone memory positive. It's a three cost swing. Obviously, Death X blows this deck up. It'd be like, it just, it doesn't be like that. But this Davis lets you do what you probably would do anyway to pass turn. Play a Vmon to dig. But why not get extra value out of it? And the fact that you could, you couldn't just keep playing these things and you hit them out of security and suddenly there's an extra body that can do an extra check next turn on the board. We run nearly as many of him as we could. We do have the one of Memory Tamer because three of these equals one of these. I mean, technically two of these equals one of these because they can only pass you one unless they're Fenrir. Um, and this only searches one in this deck. We don't have Lydramon, so it's only ever going to be a plus one. And sometimes if you hit like the super cursed Uko Omni plus armor texture, wow, Davis actually with in a basically mono blue deck. Or you hit Magna Angemon. It like there are chances that this Davis can actually do nothing and it sucks every single time. Memory setter for three is sick though. It, sometimes you have enough of these that you can just drop this during a turn. Uh, and we are on to Davis Ken for the restand. Very expensive to drop turn one, don't like doing it, but it does mean that if they've built in the back, or they haven't achieved a blocker, or you know this, they've just left a searcher. When your Vmon comes out, it swings for jamming. Whatever it goes into, it will unsuspend, which is important for your BT13 Magnamon. It's important for your EX1 Vmon if you're going something like your Gold Vdramon, where it's going into the free type. And also, it always gives you that one memory if you've got a blue Digimon, which you basically always will. 
Um, yeah, solid card. Bit expensive. I do like the three cost. The three cost is much more simple to use, and that is why we are at a three, one, and two for our tamer lineup. Again, big shout out to Jambo for getting me the promos in hand because I would not be able to build this just yet without them. We do have a decent amount of demo decks now kind of flirting around, but this got me kind of a little bit of a head start to be able to actually get some reps in on this deck. Still running the one of Emissary. No TK, so you're not going to be getting the recover, but when you are putting a Magnum Mon X antibody in your security off of a redirect, or, you know, it dies during your turn, Emissary of Hope just brings it straight back. Obviously, if they're doing multiple checks, then they're going to get rid of the Magnumonix antibody. But sometimes I just use this as a one cost. What's in my security so I can figure things out for later? One Sorai because Sorai strips four and we do love it when it strips four and just shoots out basically everything to an egg. You're basically never going to hit a Mind Link Tamer because they're usually going into a six stack. But if they're on a five, you actually kill off a Mind Link Tamer, which is pretty funny. Uh, stuns the board which relevant uh, in Luger, relevant in D-Brigade, relevant kind of in Jessmon, if they've just left searches on the board that can do stuff. You like seeing it out of security. Sometimes you drop it on hand if you're just playing a little bit more controlly. This Brook Car could probably be cut. Both of these two are kind of like flex spots where they could become other things. Right now I'm still messing around with Emissary of Hope, which is because it does add itself to hand as well, which does enable Magmon X antibody stuff. And Sora is nice as well, just uh, as an opportunity. Uh, last of the blue cards is going to be Mental Training. Reduce the cost of an Evo by two. Makes Gold Vigramon free. Makes BT8 Magnamon over EX1 Vimon free. Makes, you know, if you have a Daiken, makes the, all the Magnamons free basically. And also, you can go from Magnemon into Magnemon X Antibody for two, which actually makes it a little bit more comfortable to evolve during your turn rather than during attack step. And Magnemon Ace, if it's just sitting there unprotected, it is still evolving into a blue Digimon, so you can crack the training and do that. Nice little bomb and security. Obviously, you prefer to play it from hand to find the pieces, but you know, you run enough non mono blue cards that sometimes it just whiffs. Speaking of. Two armor texture. You may play one level three free type from your hand or trash. Is it security effect? Is it you may, so you can choose not to. But also it's free type. Ukomon is free type. Meaning Davis gives the memory. But also it means you could just play an Ukomon. Someone hits this in security and then Ukomon comes out and then suddenly you raise, gain the memory and then hatch something else. It's like, ah, amazing. My off turn has disappeared. But also, being uh, Ukomon being white means now you actually also have access to the super degenerate tech of Sideways Vimon. Uh, sideways Vimon with your Bukamon. Uh, you can now armor texture to go into an unsuspended armor. We'll go into one of the ones that doesn't unsuspend. Go into an unsuspended armor. And uh, you're chilling because it would come into the uh, because you have the white source, you can play it ignoring the color requirements and then you can go into the armor for its cost and it comes in unsuspended. So you can use that as a way to brute force um, to brute force and unsuspend on this Magnemon. I didn't mention it in the previous armor video because we didn't have a white source, but now Ukamon being your white source. Uh, you don't need Digimon Emperor to be able to enable uh, the Jambo on Suspend. Because uh, the attacks are degenerate. Not super consistent, but doesn't need to be consistent if it just gets you the extra check they weren't ready for. Uh, yeah, solid piece of tech. And now we actually have access to it. But also, more traditionally, you can just be doing normal Vmon things where you swing, you armor purge, you go again. 2x antibody were down from 3 to 2 because we did not have space. Uh, Ukumon and the Davis, they take up too much space. You liked having 3 because it meant that you were always safe from Tomihimi, but also just guaranteeing you're seeing it in attack step. But sometimes you just have too many of them. You're just waiting for your second stack to go out so you can then put an X antibody under it and it not be dead in hand. 
But it's funny, insecurity gives you the extra memory, but allowing you to go from this or this into this without having to give up a damage is very, very important, especially when you are going to be a jackass and drop four of these in one go. Fire Rocket, if you have an armor, uh, attack plus one uh, to one of your two or more color Digimon. Magnemon X Antibody is not an armor form, which does mean if you're going Magnemon and you have the X Antibody, instead of, you know, having to finagle things, you can be like, oh, I'm on my Magnemon, here's, uh, you know, going to be four checks out of security, swing X Antibody. I'm now going to pass turn with it, but I do not care because I am doing an obscene number of checks at security, usually with jamming. Um, so Fire Rocket is the reason to play this deck. Yeah, you can play a control version, but there's nothing quite as funny as tipping four of these on the table and watching their entire game plan crumble. Uh, so this is the fastest we've ever been for armor, and I hope you like my take on armor rush. Uh, maybe when Saf figures out the control build, uh, he'll be on the channel giving us the kind of more defensive, heavenly control version, because that card is very funny. Doing 6k and then for every color doing six more, being able to drop minus 18 off of any of your armors is sick. And I think if anything was going to go, these would turn into heavenly control. Uh, keep an eye on the pinned comments if I do end up doing that, or if you see it in the profile of a video, then it will be doing that. But yeah, this is... Uh, this is my current armor rush and outside of these two cards, I don't think it's going to be changing much at all. We are dummy quick and I think armor genuinely is off of 1.5 real contender for like keeping the tier one decks in check. And don't you just love to hear that? So yep, yeah, this is armor. The movie promo is a sick. Once again, thanks for Jambo for the super degenerate unsuspend armor texture tech and also for getting me the promos in hand so I can now start bullying people at locals. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the podcast where we go over all kinds of things like this. And if KB's channel does actually have the tier list, then go check that out as well. Thank you guys as we do get ready to go on to 1K so we can start doing more for the channel. I need it more than ever. So support the channel, appreciate it. And if you don't yet, change that.